someone asked me if I could pick five Islamic countries where I would live. And where would I live? What are my top five? And I have to tell you, I don't know because I've never left America. And I wouldn't be able to say where I'd want to live unless I actually traveled there and saw it. It would have to be a place with snow. I don't do well in the heat. My nose bleeds. I become lethargic. My conditioning is not made for the heat. I'm created for the snow. Uh, for the snow. And so a place where there's at least seasons would be ideal. But to immigrate to another country is a big deal. To find a job. To speak the language. Understand the new currency. Institutions. Traditions. It's not easy. You're an outsider and you're very vulnerable. Because if you get deported... Uh, for something, it's a very serious issue. And you'll never be part of that land. Regardless of being a Muslim, you're not from there. You're a foreigner. Whereas me being American, if I find a nice ranch in the mountains in the snow, I can be a Muslim there, homeschool, create my Muslim Amish style community, have my compound with all my wonderful children and their family that they'll future their that they will most likely have in the future inshallah that is more ideal because i know my own people i know my own traditions customs language taxes and everything else and i wouldn't need to spend you know ten thousand dollars to become a you know to move to become a citizen have dual citizenship to get citizenship for your kids it's a mess get approved you know, it, totally different laws, totally different type of police, no second amendment in most places. I mean, you know, it's quite difficult. So I don't really have an answer for that. Maybe one day, inshallah, if Allah permits, I can travel and then I'll have a better answer. But I'm not the kind of people who see videos on the travel channel and say, I would like to live there. No, I have to go to a location and really understand that nation before I'd say I'd want to live there and be subjected to its laws. And in the end, I think there won't really be any safe Muslim countries because secular liberalism is spreading and they have all their avenues that they're getting to you through corporations, travel, school curriculums, social media. <sighs> they are they're making their pressure and you know, they're coming for the last stand of the Muslim countries. And people say Turkey, but from my understanding, Turkey is a secular country. Saudi Arabia has some new places open up of Halloween stores. And people said MBS is, you know, very friendly towards secular values. I'm not sure. India is not safe for Muslims. Neither is China. Indonesia, I don't do good in tropical things, so, you know, you have to look at it. Egypt sounds very hot, but even there I heard people get persecuted for having a beard. In the end, the tentacles of the secular liberal atheist empire are very far and wide, very far and wide. I don't think we can outrun them, and... Since I'm discovering more and more feminist hijabis, the secular liberal atheists are already getting into the minds of many women. As women chase debt for college and put off fertility and mock fertility like Sophia Sabrina and others, you're going to see the same problems that are in America grow over there. So I don't think there'll be anywhere to run. To me, the solution is to keep giving dawah Hold the line, spread Islam where you are, rebuild where you can and maintain where you can, and have a strong network of like-minded people to reinforce you to the day you die. To me, that is a practical solution. Very practical. And as you saw, they put sanctions all on Russia. That's what they're going to do to any country who refuses to bend the knee. And they'll starve the people, turn them against the religious leader, They'll do their little new modern siege, which is to inconvenience the people to make the leader bend, to make the politicians bend, 
They'll bribe the politicians. So the grassroots element won't come from the government, but rather will come from us, from we the people. So the solution starts with us in our homes as individuals. I don't think there will be any land that is safe. And if you're going to move to a country that has water problems and has war problems, it's going to be an issue, right? And you don't have high farming and agriculture. It's very difficult. You know, at least Alaska. You know, I don't think you can consider Russia a Muslim nation. But at least Russia has some seasons. But again, I haven't traveled. So I'd have to travel. So it's really up to all of you to decide what's best for you. What works for you. And how you can spread Islam where you are. And if everybody puts their best foot forward, we stand a chance.